Oh yes, Lord. Maliga zuri kasho tolega ya gadabalia. Belongs to you. Ah, power belongs to you. You know? Yes, Lord. Power belongs to you. Glory belongs to you. Glory belongs to you. You know? Recale bozoli e geyende le borianda la 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 la. Ah. Eh, galaba sundali brama mama. To you. How I belong to you. Eh, all day. All power belongs to you. Power belongs to you. Power belongs to you. In heaven and the earth. All power belongs to you. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God rests. Marie Kele Bozon do Lega Yagalawa, God rests. Maburi Kalo Bushata Liga Ramazo do Dega, Magaru Bozo Lianga Yagadawa, Father, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Mari Casa Talava. Yes, Jesus. Landa Rabage, Rababa. Rabba, Rabba, Rikaso to Liga Yagadaba. Mamma Rigala Vazili Bushanda Lava Baba 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 we bless you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Praise the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. Marukasa Tolega Yagada. Yes, Jesus, we worship you. Kalo boso to lega ya gadaba, mariga lo boso to lega ya gadaba ba 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 ba, ma ye ge ge le bosa to lega ramalia. Ya 
Father, we worship you. We magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Malika Surikaya. We worship you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I want to thank the worship team. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we worship you. You are the awesome God. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are, you are great, O oh God. You are great, O oh God. We bless your name. 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 Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Lord. Marakabola de Santa Lega Yagada Bali Devi. Lord, we worship you. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. We will bless you forevermore. Covenant keeping God will bless you. Covenant keeping God will bless you. Covenant keeping God will bless you. Mari Gozali and Bali Pramozodo de Gayagadaba. Lord will bless your holy name. Be exalted, King of Glory. Makapu Latusotuli Gayaga. Lord, we worship you. Not for me. Na, 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We give you praise. Can I just ask everyone to just worship him one more time? Use your own words to bless him. Use your own word to bless him. Use your own words to bless him. Use your own words. Open your mouth. The hearts. It is that with the heart we believe, is mouth we confess. Declare the goodness of God upon your life. Declare the goodness of God upon your life. I welcome you on Zoom. I welcome you on Facebook. I welcome you on Instagram. I want to thank the worship team that, you know, with thank God for your efforts. Thank God for your ministration. The Lord God Almighty will reward you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God. God for your lives Amen. and thank you for making the best of the situation. Oh, can I just ask you to bless him one more time? Adore him forevermore. Adore him. Adore him. Adore him. Let your heart show gratitude. Let your mouth confess the gratitude. Confess the awesomeness of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is it that is abundant in your heart to the King of Kings? 
out of the abundance of the of, of your mouth, the, of the heart, the mouth declares. The mouth declares. Mali kasataye. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank God for technology. The worship team is ministering to us from Nigeria. Can I ask the keyboardist not to stop? I'm liking what you are playing there. So even though you are playing keyboard from Nigeria and I'm, I'm ministering from here as well, you know, we can have someone else take music from America. It's fine. It's all together. We bless God for technology. The technology is not of the devil. It's of God. Hallelujah. And we, the children of God, we use it to his glory and for his kingdom. Hallelujah to Jesus. Can I ask you, it doesn't matter where you're joining, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you have been. Even if you have praised God, like we always say in Jeremiah, you cannot over praise God. You cannot praise God too much. It doesn't matter the number of hours you used in praising him this morning. It doesn't matter the program you went to and you worship him again. Fine. This is another opportunity. You know, you know, God was saying something in Numbers. He says, He says, As you have spoken in my ears, so I will do. So, what are you saying? What is God hearing from your mouth? What are you declaring to God? Can I ask you tonight to declare great things to the King of Kings? Declare it, declare it, declare it. Declare great things, declare great things. Declare wonderful things, uh, wondrous things to the Lord of Lords, uh, to the I am that I am. Declare it. Bless him forevermore. Bless him forevermore. Bless him forevermore. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We worship you. We we'll bless you. Lord, I love you. Can I ask you to personalize it? Personalize it and tell God, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I appreciate you. I will bless you at all times. In all situations, I will give you praise. Malukasuti kaliagayagadaba. Hey, kaka. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you. You are a good God. You are a great God. I will bless you forevermore. I refuse <laughs> to worry. I refuse to complain. I refuse to fidget. Even if I don't know the future, I know my future is in your hands. So I bless you forevermore. Come on, adore him. Let go. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, you know, one of the things that, that encourages me to speak out is because the profound things in the scriptures, the profound things, particularly with Jesus, that he celebrated, that he acknowledged, that he highlighted, that he drew people's attention to, were things that were actions and not errances. They were not necessarily, oh, it's in my mind, God sees my heart, God sees my heart. No, they were actions and utterances. And by the, by, by the utterances, God or Jesus reacted to it by the statement, for example, of the centurion. He said, wow, what a great faith. The centurion could have said, oh yeah, God sees my heart. God knows. It doesn't matter. I don't have to. What he declared, when that one leper came out of the ten lepers, that was an action that Jesus acknowledged. When you declare something, God ever responds to what you declare, what you say. I always say that there's no joke in heaven. There's no joke. There's no, there's no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, what you want God to do for you. Many times Jesus Christ would ask, what do you want me 
to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? As you declare, can I ask us uh, for the next one minute or less to say, declare something good to God as a form of worship. God, you are a good God. God, you are a merciful God. God, you are a mighty God. God, you are an awesome God. God, you are a faithful God. God, you are a good God. <laughs> you will forever be my God. And God is a generational God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh God. God is a generational God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, God does not pass with faces or faces or generations or, well, that one is old-fashioned. That one is outdated. God is never outdated. The Bible says the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Whatever the world brings, God and the scriptures are more than enough. Some of the things that the Bible predicted and prophesied are just happening now, thousands of years after. So it's not a question of, oh, this, the Bible does not, isn't it amazing? The Bible had been written thousands of years ago, and yet it is still relevant to every matter of your life. It is still relevant to every situation of your life. There are, there are some technological gadgets that are no longer applicable now. There are some apps that you cannot use. There are some phones that have been discontinued. They, they, are, not, they are no longer produced. They are outdated. There are some fashion that are no longer in vogue. There are people that have been forgotten. When they ruled, people knew that they were on the face of this earth. The moment they died, everything died with them. But God is forever sure. God is forever sure. We bless him forevermore tonight. We give him praise. We give him glory. He's worthy. Oh God, I will worship you forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Again, I welcome you. I welcome you tonight. I give God all the praise that you can spend your time with us. Um, at this time, this is our first edition of a Time with Jesus series. And I know that your time will not be in vain. The time that you have committed to spend with us will not be in vain. More importantly, the time you have committed to spend with the King of Kings, he will speak to you. He will minister to you. His entrance, the entrance of his word gives light and understanding to the simple. Receive the light of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the understanding from heaven, O oh God. Receive clarity from heaven in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, receive clarity. The Bible says in his light, we have light. Makupaya, you will have light. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ, we have light Amen. in his light. In him we move, in him we live, in him we have our being. God will reveal his ways to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, again I welcome you on Facebook, Instagram, and those who are joining on Zoom. You are welcome in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The theme, what we're dealing with and what we're going to be dealing with briefly is generational covenant. And it's interesting the way the Holy Spirit has instructed us to approach this. There's a word for someone when, when, when I was, when we were preparing for this, that the Lord gave me a word. And particularly, I think specifically, was it Thursday? What I have never had before. The Lord said he was going to do it for someone here. Watch out for it. But before I give that word, let us go into Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm so excited to go to that word that I'm going to try as much as possible. I'm not making any promises, but I'm going to try to keep this message short. Because the word the Lord gave was a revelation to me as well that I myself had to say, God help me. I had to connect with it. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 12 to 15. You are standing here. In order to enter into a covenant with the Lord your God. A covenant the Lord is making with you this day. Sealing with an oath to confirm you this day as his people. That he may be your God as he promised you. And as he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Verse 14. I am making this covenant with his oath, not only with you. Now listen to this. Not only with you who are standing here. So first of all, God was saying, I have a covenant with your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now it has connected with you as well. But it says not only with you. It says not only with you who are standing here with us today. In the presence of the Lord our God. But also with those who are not here today. Also with those children that are not with you. With those children yet unborn. Ha! With those children that maybe have gone their different ways. That generation, that covenant applies to them as well. That covenant applies to them, whether they are physically present or not. The covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob applies to those children as well. Generational covenant. Generational covenant. Covenant that transcends you. That it's... it's it's outside, it's, it's, it goes ahead of you, beyond you. Some of us are enjoying a generational covenant and we will pass it to our children because it's about our generation. A transgenerational. Some, uh, God is going to make a covenant. God did not make a covenant with Terah, but he made it with Abraham. So it can start with you. Even if you cannot, because some, some maybe our parents were not born again, our parents didn't have that kind of relationship with God and all of that, but it can start with you and God can make a promise and a covenant with you that will reflect in the lives of your children. Ekopaliata. And will reflect in the lives of your children's children. Long after you have gone, the covenant will be working in the lives of your children's children's children. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why, you see, one of the things that we emphasize is that you don't live for yourself alone. Because... This is how to activate a generational covenant. You don't live for yourself alone. A man is not meant only to live for himself. One of the, we, we say this, listen. Every action a man takes, everything a man does has a ripple effect over his generation. A man one of the signs of maturity of a man, not only a man, parent, what, what makes you a parent is because a parent becomes selfless. You, you, you automatically become selfless. You think about your children, how it will be well with them. Of, of recent, I was talking about, I was talking about that, that's what is called parental joy. Parental pride, the joy of a parent, the joy of uh, the pride of a parent. So when your children are doing well, 
There's a certain joy that wells up inside of you that money cannot buy. When, when, when your children are making exploits, there's a certain pride. Many of us have, have had situations where your two-year-old child or your one-year-old child begins to walk and you are looking with pride and you are telling everybody or he begins to talk and you are so proud to show everybody and say, look at what he's saying. Even though the person you are talking to is already, is already me, is used to things like that. But to you, you are feeling that pride. And you are saying, wow, oh my child, he speaks like this. He does this. He does that. And, and to the person listening to you, it may not be a big deal because maybe his children too have gone through that. But for you, there's that joy of a parent. The first time your child began, began to speak and to talk, if whatever whatever he says doesn't matter, maybe he just said that deal in a funny way, but you are proud. The joy and the pride of a parent. So a man is not, let me show you something in the scriptures. How selfless a, a parent can be. Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27. And, and you see, it, it's just amazing. You know, after a while, God had made up his mind that, listen, Moses, you are not going to the promised land. All right? You can see it, but you're not going to go to go there. And God made that pronouncement. Look at Numbers chapter 27, verse 12. Let me start from verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, go up this mountain in the Abarim range, and see the land I have given the Israelites. Verse, 20, verse 13. After you have seen it, you too will be gathered to your people, as your brother Aaron was. For when the community rebelled at the waters in the desert of Zin, both of you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. And look at the reply of Moses. Just look at the reply of Moses. I thought Moses would still try and persuade God. We still try and uh, be emotional, sentimental. We still try and, uh, you know, do some negotiations. Verse 15, he replies immediately. Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God who gives breath, to all living things, appoint someone over this community. Moses' concern was about his children, the children of Israel. Moses' concern, he was not concerned about himself. He was not concerned about, about his name. He wasn't concerned. The next thing he replied God was about the children of Israel, who by and large, in this day and age, you, we can rightly say they were, his, they, are, they were his children in the Lord. Because he nurtured them. He carried them in his hands. He, he nurtured them all through the journey. All through the wilderness journey. You can say that he, they, were, they were his children in the Lord. You're, he, 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 and I looked at how selfless he was. The next statement he said to what God said to him was about the continuation of the purpose of God. In the life of his children. I said, okay, these people need the selflessness of a man, the selflessness of a father, the selflessness of a parent. Now, when you are conscious that your actions create certain things, you 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 realize that you shouldn't live for yourself alone. Your responsibility goes beyond you. So be mindful of your actions. Can I ask you, what will your actions produce? What are your actions in life producing? Blessings or curses? What are your actions in life presently? What are your actions in life producing? When you are conscious that your actions are producing and initiating certain things, 
You are more careful. You are more sensitive. You are more obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You just don't take actions um, uh, sentimentally or emotionally. Why? Because every, you know, in my language, they, they always say, Oh, my lady. Oh, my lady. That means it will have a repercussion. And that's it for every man, every husband, every father. Whatever you do will have effect. We At Man to Man, every Friday, we are dealing with a topic uh, called fatherhood. We've been, we've been dealing with that from from um, from beginning of the year, fatherhood. And, and you, we, we realize, you know, there are certain things that you do. And you are, you are who you are, and it will have a ripple effect. Let me read a scripture. It's a little bit, let me read Numbers chapter 25. I have to read some verses so that you understand what happened there. I'm saying that there are actions you take, Mali Kasitika, the actions you take, that will have effect either positively or negatively before God. Numbers 25. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. It's a story, but I want you to follow it. I don't want to just pick verse, the verse so you will understand how it went about. Numbers chapter 25 from verse 1. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to the ban of Peor and burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of these people, kill them, and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord. So that way from Israel. Verse 5. So Moses said to Israel judges, Each of you must put to death those of your people who have yoked themselves to the Baal of Peel. Then an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses. Hallelujah. And India, um, um, let me read verse, verse 7, no, no, no. Let me read verse 6. Then an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel, while they were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. What audacity! What audacity! Verse 7. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelites into the tent. He drove the spear into both of them, right to into the uh, right through the Israelite man and into the woman's stomach. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered twenty-four thousand. Hallelujah! Numbered twenty-four thousand. Verse ten. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away from Israelites. Since he was as zealous for my honor among them as I am, I did not put an end to them in my zeal. Therefore, verse 24, therefore tell him, I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants, know that? He 
and his descendants. Verse 2, 12. I'm going to read verse 12 again. Therefore, tell him, I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the, for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. Since he was zealous for my honor, among them as I am, I did not put an end to them in my zeal. Therefore, verse, verse 12, I therefore tell him, I am making a covenant of peace with him, and not only with him, not only with him, with his descendants. Generational covenant. Generational covenant. Now, listen. There are two kinds of actions that can initiate and ignite a covenant. There is the action of obedience. When God tells you to do something and you do it, God can be moved and, and initiates a covenant, a, a strong promise and says, this is going to happen to you because of what you have done, because you have obeyed. We see that in the life of Abraham. Because he obeyed. God spoke to him in spite of the challenging situations, but he obeyed. So that can happen. But this, which I believe, at both, I don't want to say one is stronger than the other, but this also is very peculiar. It's very strong. When you take the initiative and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you take an action. David said, no, 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 I cannot be sleeping in palace. There was so before him. But he took that initiative and God ignited a covenant. God initiated a covenant with him. You remember Rahab the Ahalot? He could, she, could have, she could have pushed the spies away. But her action made it that his, her generation was saved. Her generation was saved. You see, it's true, we have said this before, the spiritual controls the physical. Heaven controls the physical. At the same time, at the same time, the physical can ignite and initiate Something in the heavenlies. Alright? So when you find the student where it says, Because you have done this. Because you have done this. What are your actions producing? What are your actions bringing? What is the response of heaven to your actions? To your utterances? To your the steps you are taking? How is heaven reacting to what you are doing? That will it give you a covenant from God? Will it initiate something and God will say, No, you have done this because you have done this. Because you have done this. This is what I'm going to do for you. It is one thing to obey God's instruction. That is good in itself. At the same time, when God drops things in your heart by form of any, and you take step, like the scripture we read in Numbers 25, Phinehas took a step, and by reason of what he did, the Lord initiated a covenant with him, not only with him, with also his generation, Makayadana. May you take the right steps. May you take steps and decisions and actions that will bring a positive effect upon your generation in the name of Jesus Christ. May you serve God to the point where heaven will recognize you and recognize your generation. May you, may you love God to the point where heaven will set you aside and set your generation aside. I said, this one has served me to a point that his generation will know no lack. 
that this generation will never be sick. That this generation will have this. You may, may you serve God. May you love God. May you sacrifice for God. May you, may you do things that God will say, no, I cannot overlook this. I cannot overlook this. I cannot overlook this. May you, may you, may you stand out in your, in your service to God. That your children and your children's children will be enjoying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said to me, Makayataliaga. Exactly on Thursday as I was preparing, the Lord said to me that I'm going to make a covenant of compensation. A covenant of compensation for someone. When the Lord said that, I quickly received it for myself. But I know the Lord said I should tell someone that. That I'm going to make a covenant of compensation do you know what i did first of all i went to check the meaning of compensation of course there are some words you think you know the meaning but when it comes like this as a rema you will do well to check it yourself because there may be something that god is saying that you think you knew but you, you will see a new thing and i checked the definition of compensation that's something awarded to someone in recognition of a loss or a suffering or an injury. That's the first definition. The second definition is something that makes up for an undesirable or unwelcome state of affairs. God said, I'm going to give you a covenant. I'm going to make for you, make with you a covenant of compensation. What you have gone through. You have gone through. God says, I'm going to compensate you. I'm going to give you something that will compensate for what you might have gone through or what you are going through. He said, I'm going to give you a covenant. I'm going to make for you a covenant of compensation for what you have gone through. Or you feel, oh, if only, if only, your if only shall be compensated. I am not talking about those who feel sorry for themselves. No, I'm talking, I'm not talking about those who just give excuses. No, I'm talking about a situation where really you are at a disadvantage. You, 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 there was a loss in your life. Or your state is undesirable, is unwelcome. God said, I am going to compensate you. Listen to me. Gen Genesis chapter 29 verse 31. The Bible says, when God saw that Leah was unloved, he compensated her. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that was an unwelcome state for Leah. That was an un un undesirable situation for Leah. That was an undesirable situation. So when God saw that he was, she was unloved, God said, okay, I'm going to open your womb. God gave her seven children. Then, additionally, from, two, from, maid, from a maid, two sons. So all in all, in, 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 um, in uh, Leah's name, Leah had nine children. When God saw is there something you are going through? A situation you find yourself or you have gone through in life? Some things that you have lost. A loss that you have, so, you have suffered. The Lord said I should tell you that I'm going to compensate you. He says I'm making a covenant of compensation. That yes, maybe that thing that you have lost, you feel that you cannot recover it again. It's no problem. I am going to compensate you. Do you realize that that love, the Bible did not say that and, and, and Jacob loved Leah again. The love was more than Rachel's. No. Because, okay, you feel that you have lost in this area. But I'm going to compensate you in many other areas. 
I'm going to compensate you in many other areas. Jonathan was not given the kingship. Jonathan was not given the kingship. Jonathan lost the kingship. Let us put it that way. And he died by the actions and the inactions of his father. But when David got to the throne, he said, is there anybody still left? And then there was Jonathan's son. And David compensated. Whatever you have lost, whatever you have lost, God says, I should tell you, I speak by the word of the Lord. You will be compensated. And it's not just going to be a one-off. Don't forget the children of Leah became pillars of Israel. Became the tribes of Israel. So it's not going to be a one-off. It's going to be a compensation. A continuous, that's why it's a covenant of compensation. We are ever you. Your children may be at a disadvantage. Wherever you may be at a disadvantage. Situations that nobody can help you. God will look at it. And by reason, raise help for you in many other areas. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7. For your shame. You shall have double portion. Instead of the grace, this grace, you shall rejoice in your inheritance. And so, you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. For your shame, is there a place where you feel you, 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 shame is coming to you? God said, I will, or you have experienced shame before now. God says, I will compensate you. God says, I will compensate you. I will give you something that will make up for your undesirable situation, for your unwelcome state. I will give you some things that will make up for it. When the Lord brings back the captivity of Zion, we are like they that dreams. Things that will happen to you that will make that loss become so insignificant. That will make that loss become so irrelevant. Ha! Receive the covenant of compensation tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the covenant. Never dwell on your disadvantage anymore. From this moment on, God says he's going to give you covenant of compensation. From this moment on. From this moment, you shall be compensated. Harakabalia. Do you know sometimes, especially in this country, <laughs> you know, many times, sometimes you, you may be someone, you have an accident, and then the insurance wants to give you uh, a compensation and all that. Most times, the compensations are more than even the real thing that you lost. Maybe there's injury at work and uh, I've had situations of people that had injury at work and by the time they give them compensation, it's more than what the injury they had at work. All right. it, they, their compensation will swallow up your loss in the name of Jesus Christ. Your compensation will make your loss become irrelevant. The Bible says for your shame, you shall receive double portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. If you can, raise your hand to connect. You can put one of your hands on your chest. You can put it on your head, wherever you want to put it. And declare to yourself, I receive the covenant of compensation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might have felt you have lost certain things. God said the compensation will far outweigh. We swallow up what you have lost in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive that covenant tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Never again will you mourn over your loss. 
Never again. The Bible says concerning Job, his latter end was greater and better than his former. He lost children truly. He lost riches. But the Bible says his latter end, by the time God compensated him for standing, Ako Kaliata, he, 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 he became even a greater man from this moment. Ha, received the covenant of compensation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your loss be replaced. Let your suffering be removed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. I receive it for myself as well. I receive it. Oh, God, you might have gone through so much in life. You might have gone through so much in life. You might have gone through so much. But tonight, the Lord says he's compensating you for all that you have gone through and you are still standing. You didn't backslide. You didn't turn back. He says, I'm compensating you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank God for tonight. We thank God for what God has said to us. We give him praise. We'll have to end it now. We want to apologize for the Zoom people. We don't know what happened to Zoom along the line. But thank God for joining on Instagram and on Facebook. The Lord